Okay, so today we start our big project. So before today, in this first you know month or so, we kind we worked on some specific skills as far as reading and consuming research, as well as now starting to do some more specific writing. So from now on, everything that we do is going to be on a single topic and we're just going to build each section one at a time. So the first thing we have to do is obviously pick that topic. And there's a wonderful reading on Moodle, or not Moodle, it's Canvas now, but you get the point. There's a great reading on there about how choosing a topic is research in itself. In order to choose a good topic, you have to do some basic research as far as you know, getting into the literature to understand what has been done, what needs to be done, what's interesting. And so that is the premise for today's assignment that is due on Wednesday, I believe, the concept map or cluster map. So if you, would, if you want to follow along and do some of your own while we do it, that would be great. So you can go in there, go to the assignment page for the concept or cluster map. I call it something different each time. And this choosing a topic word document is there. Oh, didn't save, so I gotta, I gotta unlock that, okay. That's what happens when I uh, try to get too fancy. Okay, that should get you there. Yes? Okay. So, this isn't quite as, um, this isn't quite as much of a wedding proposal as like a master's thesis or a doctoral dissertation. But you are going to, you know, be married to this topic um, for the next, what, two months, three, two and a half months. So you want something that is interesting to you. So that's my first recommendation. My second word of warning is this. You need to take this seriously enough and prepare and do it well, because anything from this moment on that isn't done well will need to be redone. So for example, if halfway through our project, we end up finding that there's not enough research or that there's too much or whatever on a specific topic, you will have to come all the way back here and choose a new topic. All right. 
same thing will occur with the writing and all that. Like not only as you go through, you would, if you had to completely start over, you would have to redo all the assignments that we did. Or if your assignment just sucks, you're resubmitting it in the final project, final paper. So those are my two words of warning. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I would like you to do is to take about five minutes or so to come up with three things that are at all interesting to you that you would like to know more about. Any three things. Try to be broad in that. So like, a topic could be, I'm really interested in knee injuries, for example. I could be interested in concussions. I could be interested in underwater running, cross training, kinesio taping, pick something that somebody does and try to pick three. Okay, I'll give you just a few minutes to do that. Uh, yeah, cluster map, concept map, choosing a topic, some assignment. So do we all have at least one concept? Okay. So next, what we're going to do is make a concept or a cluster map. And so you can do this on the computer with, you know, bubbles and all that sort of stuff. You can print out a uh, print out this sheet and draw it, or if you have a fancy, you know, uh, computer, you can just draw it on your screen. 
but this is where your cluster map is going to be on this sheet or you can just attach it uh, separately. So a concept or cluster map is a way to visually break down a topic. So like I stated, your concept might be something like knee injuries. There's a lot to know about knee injuries. So this is where, this is where legitimately Google is your best friend. So for this one, this is just an example I did quickly one time. I use knee injuries as, in football as my idea. If you Google knee injuries in football, you'll probably get a whole bunch of like um, examples of that, and that's great. But what I need to understand is what are the components of that? And so when I Google knee injuries in football, and I look at some of the examples, I realize there are two different types of knee injuries common in football, contact injuries and non-contact injuries. So coming off of my knee injuries in football, I do that into contact and non-contact. Right. I also find out that there are two main types of injuries that I see a lot. Cruciate ligament injuries, right, ACL, PCLs, and collateral knee injuries. I see there's a bunch of different treatment options. You know, there's talk of injury rates, there's talk about non-traumatic injuries, all these different things. So when I Google my concept, right, I need to look at what sort of things come up and use your own knowledge of your concept or your topic as well. What are some of the big things going on in there? So who has uh, an example they would like to uh, share with the class? See, this is where if you use your example, I do your assignment for you. Evan, what's yours? Okay. So let's go up one level from that. And so what do cupping and scraping have in common? Like what, they're mainly used to, yeah, I mean, they're like a recovery or treatment technique, mainly for um, more chronic type injuries or healing. So we're talking about improving healing. And so our concept in this case would be like improving healing, since we're going to have two of that. And then coming off of improving healing, since we're really, you know, our real aspect was now cupping and uh, instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. That's what scraping is, instrument-assisted uh, soft tissue mobilization. If you don't know what these are, these are two different techniques. One uh, uh, involves the use of suction, and so you put a literally a cup on the body tissue and suck the air out, and it like sucks the skin out, and that's what creates those like red circles you see on people sometimes and scraping or institutional uh, or uh, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization, I-STEM, is the use of metal tools to, that's why they call it scraping, like do uh, mobilization, like you literally just scrape across the skin trying to break up adhesions, okay? So from these two, that's, 
now that's a suit now I'm going to use as an example and let's just go with Cuppy right to start off with because really you're going to be running almost two concept maps so let's look at cupping so the first thing if I were to just guess on googling cupping there's going to be a bunch of different brands I'm assuming and they're going to try to sell me on those brands. So I'll put brands down. Right? There are also different techniques. Right? There's a stationary technique and there's a gliding technique. There are also different suction methods. There's manual suction and then there is literally fire suction where you light the sum gun on fire and by burning and consuming the oxygen it creates suction. So I would so that is 3 off of that one. I would like to get to about 5 things off of each one. So those were the three that came to my mind. I'm sure the Google would give us some more. Let's do one more example. Who, has a, who would like to share a topic they're interested in? OK, speed training. Great one. So now, when I start thinking of speed training, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking of the basic, you know, fit type principle, right? We have frequency, intensity, right? Type and time. All right, that's that's what comes to my mind anytime we see training. Frequency, intensity, um, type or mode and time. So that would be there and then maybe is there another big topic that you have uh, like in there another one of mine? yeah how about how about technique yeah mechanics right i mean like in speed training mechanics is becoming a big a big component okay so that's perfect so that's five that's about what i want and as long as I'm comfortable with, you know, that all of those things are of some interest to me, great. If I'm starting to stretch to the point where I'm like, I don't really care about that, then I probably have too many. So I also want three levels. So by three levels, let's go back to this. I have one level is my main, knee injuries in football. Non-contact is the second level. And when I look at non-contact injuries, I want a third level. So when I read about non-contact injuries, I see a lot about cutting and jumping. All right, so cutting, B1, jumping, could be another there's not a lot of jumping in football it's mainly cutting but when I also start looking at non-contact knee injuries I see this idea of Q angle comes into play and Q angle is the quadriceps angle basically width of hips to lay to uh, knees you also see VMO control coming into play right and then uh, also hip control right knee positioning stuff like that so let's go back to Rudy's because it works uh, fairly well in there. So let's look at frequency. What sort of frequency different types of training programs are out there for speed? Let's go, I mean, the big one would be like daily, every other day, you know, how often, that's what frequency is. So I mean, Basically, the two main types, and for a 
for it to be a true third level, it has to have at least two things coming off of it. So let's go for frequency, daily versus every other day. All right, those are the two main training protocols. Not many people uh, come up with much more than that. You can also include in frequency a little bit if you look at within set frequency, the idea of full recovery versus partial recovery. All right, so now we got four things coming off of that one. That's about good. So intensity. So when I think of intensity, I'm thinking maximum versus submaximum. And in speed training, I'm also thinking of over speed versus under speed versus full speed training. So in that one, because there are three that might, um, that might come into play with that, Rotate, 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 rotate. Board. Okay, so looking at Rudy's, right, what do we start off with here? Speed training? Coming off of frequency, we had daily every other day full recovery and partial right and when we look at these right each one of these can be more individual so now when we go to intensity Because we're really looking at groups of two a lot more than this, because this is daily, every other day it could be, but these are every day frequency training is very different than every other day frequency training. Um, whereas same with full recovery, partial recovery. I can also do it this way here. So let's now do a third level that's load. and then come off to a fourth level, which is underload, overload. Right, and then off of intensity, I'll do maximum, submaximum. I could then, you know, because that's basically just off of intensity. And so it really doesn't matter then as much how many levels I have. I need to have at least three levels because I want to be at least three levels away. And I need to have probably, so that would give me, say, at least. 10 to 15 at minimum on my final level things. Does that make sense as far as what I'm asking on this concept map? Yes. Do you have like a That is the, I mean, that's the basic premise of how all trainings are created.
that gives you a good starting point. At least one more. Now, when you do a fairly generic like the fit principle, it makes it more likely that you would need to go out to a fourth level to get specific enough for something that's not so broad. And so there are some instructions here as well to give you some guidance. As well as then the specific instructions on that. But basically it's the same thing. In this area, on a separate sheet of paper, wherever you want, draw out a concept map of at least, we'll go 15 or so final level thoughts. This is due Wednesday. From there, I have three questions. Oh, good question. Just one. Pick your favorite okay. of the top topics. I always try to give you a, you know, a going back point that's a little bit closer than the end. All right, so start. pick your favorite of the three general topic areas and do a concept map for that. So don't spend a ton of time then trying to, you know, differentiate between your top three and maybe your top four because we're really only doing one of them but you have some backups in case something happens yes so, yep don't at this point for this week i'm going to ask you just to really try to stay with me for just this week because on wednesday we will turn our concept map into a question. So don't get too crazy on you know, getting very specific. If you have a very specific idea in mind, that's great. And then just do this assignment and just kind of do it in case we need to go back to it. Yep, yep. I would go at least a little bit closer with that. So like if strength and conditioning would be like, like, like speed, pick speed or hypertrophy or something a little bit more. Because basically a good rule of thumb is if your topic is too broad, if you could go more than like 10 things around it. So like strength and conditioning would have way more than 10 things around it. And so then it becomes just too massive, right? You need like something the size of this wall. So after you've drawn at least 15 things, I want you to look at the final level. So in this case, it would be, for Rudy, it'd be full recovery, partial recovery, overtraining, undertraining, some maximum, whatever the final levels are. And I'd like you to pick one, maybe two of those that are interesting to you. And I would like you to tell me what interests you about that.
Next, I would like you to look at the whole. Look at the whole component of your concept map. And think about what questions you still have about that topic. So like a good one for Rudy, going back to Rudy's there, might be, are there new speed training techniques that I don't know even exist? Right? For Evan, it might be, it might be, does, you know, does specific training actually help? You know, like do certified, you know, does certification actually improve patient outcomes? Because in these situations, a lot of people know how to do them. Very few are certified in them because you don't have to be certified in them to perform them. It's not a restricted skill set. All right, any sort of question out there. You know, do, come up with at least two that you're interested in and you might want to follow up on. Lastly, for the assignment, I want you to start to get more specific. And so before you answer question C here, I would like you to do some preliminary searching in the, um, in the model of choosing a topic as research. So I want you to now think of you know, the specific areas in there, you know, if I made you pick a p topic today, what would you pick? And then I would like you to do some research on that, not reading a ton of it, but just doing some preliminary searching. And you're really trying to answer two main questions. First and foremost, is there research on my topic? Has somebody actually done some research on that? Are there some randomized controlled trials? Some, has somebody written about this? And you need to have in the neighborhood of at least five to 10 articles that are talking about what you're interested in. So for Evan, going back to his, because his specific interest is at the higher level, right? He may get into, he may get into, okay, so cupping and scraping both, you know, when he gets to his third level, there will be some overlap. Both of them have increased blood flow in there, right? That's a goal. And so since his is a comparison, which is a little bit more unique, it'd be like, okay, has there been research done comparing cupping to instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization looking at blood flow? Has anybody ever looked at that? Anybody? I have no idea. If nobody has, then it's not going to be a good topic. Right? You need at least you know, five people to have investigated something similar to what you want to do. On the other hand, if you know, in Rudy's case, he look, he decides to research, he's most interested in maximum intensity speed training. Just made it up for him. Most interested in maximum intensity speed training. And he does some searching for that. 
you know, PubMed, Sports Discus, whatever you're comfortable using, we'll show you how to use all of these different ones, but whatever you're comfortable researching. If you look at that and you find that somebody has already done a systematic review on that topic, then you don't want to do that one either because you're just copying somebody else's work. And that just doesn't add to the body of research. And so, like I said before um, on that, you know, these are very publishable projects when you're done, but only if it's new. Not to mention it's also not very fair if there's already a systematic review because you could just basically copy what they did. And that's not the purpose here. So you need to do some searching in this. And when you answer this question, start to think about what about, you know, you're, it's hopefully A, B and, or A and B lead to C, where you're interested about something, you have some questions about it that you don't know the answer to right, that you want to know the answer to. And so you start looking a little bit and see what specific things. If you started to try to create a topic right now, what sort of things would you do, right? Is there research on there, right? So like on your notes, the, I mean, two notes that I would make in C is how, you know, how many, research studies, just looking at the title, do I think is about this? And can I, you know, if I type in systematic review and maximum intensity speed training, does it pop right up there? That's the end of that assignment. If, if it does, if it doesn't go in there, that's where you go to like your second idea with that. You have this concept map, move over a little bit. You know, does sub-maximum intensity training have a systematic review on it or articles? Or, you know, or I, maybe I go, well, no, now I'm not as interested in that. Now I want to look at full recovery, right? That's what the concept map is for. Each of those final levels could be the start of a project for you. That's the idea. Or, you, or it's completely possible at that point. I mean, because this shouldn't take that long. You know, it's completely possible that I really was only interested in maximum intensity speed training because I did an internship on it this summer and blah, 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 blah. And if that's already been answered for me, then I would rather go to, you know, underwater weighing, right? And completely blow up this topic and go to another topic, which is perfectly acceptable too. You, you don't need to make another concept map. You would just go through the process again to then create, because Wednesday's assignment will be writing a question. So if between, so say on Wednesday or Tuesday night, you submit your concept map and Wednesday you decide, no, I don't need, you know, I don't want to do that. Then you would just need to go through the concept map process to create a new question you would not need to resubmit it. Other questions on how to do this assignment? Other questions about anything? Correct. <laughs>